Welcome to the lesson on 15.1, defining and evaluating a logarithmic function. The main question we'll be addressing is, what is the inverse of exponential function? And what is the value of f of b for any real number m? Understanding logarithmic function as inverse of exponential function. So we're going to start with an example, guys. The inverse of an exponential function, in this case, f of x equals 2x, is called a logarithmic function. So in this particular case, so we, we actually write that as f inverse of x is log base 2 of x. So when you have base 2 to the x, that's called exponential function. And the inverse is just simply write log at subscript base 2 of x. So for f of x, that's shown here in black graph. Uh, we've shown all the, um, the coordinate values. In order to get the, uh, the graph of the log base 2 of x, we, we simply swap the input and the output. Just swap the x and y coordinates, right? And that's what that looks like right there. And as expected, uh, they appear to be mirror image over y equal to x. And then, and then so we're going to uh, try to describe uh, the properties of its graphs and its functions. So we've done this one with exponential functions, so why don't you give it a shot, uh, pause the video, and you try. Okay, we're back. You should have gotten these values. As you could tell, uh, the black graph right here, uh, the x is all real numbers, and the y values appear to be greater than zero, and and then there seem to be horizontal asymptote at y equal to zero, right there. And the function is increasing. And as x goes to infinity, y is going up, so it's positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, as it goes to the left, y is approaching zero. And for logarithm, we simply notice that the domain appears to be greater than zero, x equal to zero. And the value of y is all real numbers. Oh wow, as expected, the role of the domain and range is swapped between the inverse functions, right? So asymptote, without even looking at the graph, if y is equal to 0, maybe it's x equal to 0, and it is. If you look at the asymptote right there, and that is x equal to 0. And the function in this case is increasing. Uh, the difference is that the exponential function is increasing at an increasing rate. Uh, so I think in calculus we call that concave up. Uh, this is increasing but at a decreasing rate. So it's, it's, it's getting bigger, but it's decreasing slightly less than before, right? And that's called concave down, but you don't have to know that for now. In behavior, as x goes to infinity, y appears to be still growing, so that's fine. But x doesn't go to negative infinity, it only goes towards the zero, right? and then y becomes negative, okay? Oh look, the role of the x and y, if you had noticed, is also reversed. So basically, when you have b to the x equal to a, is an exponential form. So the base b raised to the power a gives a value of number a in logarithmic form. You got log of base b, the input on the output has been swapped, it's a and x. Here, the input is x, output is a. In logarithm, make form, uh, we have input is the a and output is the x. Uh, once again, for both of them, b, the base cannot be 0 and base cannot be 1. And also, it cannot be negative, obviously, right? The base is non-negative values, and it can't be 0, it can't be 1. Okay, so given that, uh, what is the exponential, given the exponential form over here, what is the logarithmic form? So that's base b. So 3 goes in, then 64 pops out. Then it should be 64 goes in, 3 pops out. Right? Log base 4. So 64 is the input, 3 is the output. The next question, log base 5 of 1 over 25 is equal to 2. Uh, that doesn't look right because what that means is that 5 to the power of 2 should be 1 over 25. Mm, I think I made a mistake. It should be negative 2, right? So look, the input is 
1 over 25, and the output is negative 2. So in exponential form, the base 5, the input is negative 2, gives you this. Is that true? Uh, yeah, because if you have negative exponent, that's equal to 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25. And logarithmic form is log base 2 thirds, and then you swap the order, QP. In other words, uh, log of 2 thirds of Q gives you P. But when you're first starting out, though, uh, regardless of what you have, whenever you have a logarithmic form, it's a good idea to get back to our base of our understanding, which is exponential form, right? Just like when you learn to subtract, we thought of it in terms of addition, in, in terms of uh, undoing of an addition. Same thing with division. We went back to the base of multiplication, right? So at least until you get comfortable with it, uh, converting it back to exponential form is a very, very good idea. Now we turn to evaluating logarithmic function by thinking of them in exponents, as I had mentioned earlier. So if you have a function of x, log base 2 of x, then when you pop it in there, that's just basically log base 2 of 8. But you want to evaluate that. So why don't we set it equal to letter P? Uh, because if you think about it, uh, when you convert it to exponential form, it looks like 2 to the rate power of P is equal to 8. Now, we've seen this before. That is equal to 8 is equal to 2 to the third power, right? So the P has to equal to 3. But P is equal to P F of 8. So we can conclude that function of 8 is equal to 3. In other words, 2 to the what power gives you the value of 8. That's what this is asking. Okay, So it basically inverse of exponential function. So what this means is 2 to the what power gives you 1 eighth. And for those of you who are very comfortable, you have the answer already, right? Uh, but let's go through the procedure. So this log base 2 to 1 eighth, set that equal to p, then convert that into exponential form. So 2 to the p is 1 eighth, but 1 eighth is 2 to the 1 third, uh, sorry, 2 to the third. So p is negative 3. In other words, f of 1 eighth is equal to negative 3. Pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, so here I plug in just one more time and we convert that to exponential form. And because root 2 is 2 to the half power, p must be half. Therefore, function of root 2 is 1 half. Or simply put, log base 2 of root 2 is half. So when you have log base 7, let's say, of a number, you could think of it this way. The output is 7 of the power is a number, right? All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow morning.